right, so I'm just going to ask you like three or four questions about, about you know. All right. Good to go? Yeah. yeah. All right. So a lot of people think that your life has been easy. Like school has always been handed to you because you're so smart, but has it been easy? I mean, I might be smart and I might get good grades with, you know, little effort because it comes naturally, but behind the scenes, no, it's definitely not been easy. I've had to go through some stuff. The lower class children of McHenry can feel pressure unfelt by those who have more financial success, which can cause these students to crack under the pressure, but it can also cause these students to shine and excel in academics. Home life for students varies around the country, but this doesn't directly correlate to how students perform in the classroom. The divorce rate in this country today is 11% for educated couples and 17% for lower income couples, but it was much higher percentage for our parents, the generation before us. This has a very large effect on Generation Z. The poverty rate, however, has gone down 14.8% to 12.3%, but this still has an effect on students today. We believe that a student is not a product of their past. They are what they strive to be within the future. Now, a past can have an effect on their future, but it does not define them. How much do you see home life affecting students at McHenry East? So, I'd say it's a huge part of, you know, why a lot of students struggle. I mean, believe it or not, I think last year we had 25 homeless students in, in our school, um, which was probably one of the larger populations of homeless students in McHenry County. Do you think it is one of the biggest factors in a child's education, or the ability to obtain an education? So, with regards to home life, I think that there are a lot of factors that play into that. Um, you know, obviously, if they have parental support, what their family life consists of, um, you know, what kind of goals they have for themselves, what kind of goals their um, support has for them. Um, and I think there are a lot of unique situations where students might not have that support um, and then there are you know plenty of our students that do have that support and find ways to be successful poverty is just one of the numerous examples of everyday struggles many children of america must face at home in economic terms poverty is defined as earning less than a dollar 90 a day but in reality it is more than that in 2016 21.2 percent of all children in america lived in poverty with all this information, 56.6 million students will still attend an elementary or secondary school. All right, um, how much do you see home life affecting students? That's really interesting. Um, if you had asked me at the beginning of my career, I would have said that I think home life has like a gigantically huge factor on academic like performance and behavior and things like that in the classroom. But the further along I get in my career, the more I realize that it really is on a case-by-case -case basis how much it affects people. And I think it's like the personality of the student themselves, how much they allow it to affect them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, there's a researcher named John Hattie who did this um, study where he was looking at how home life affects students. And he found that it was actually one of the things that affected students a lot less than most people believe, which I was surprised yeah. by. Um, that it had such like a minor amount on academic performance, but um, 
yeah, it, it's changed throughout yeah. time. All right. Uh, what were your motivations to work in a student service? Sure. Um, so I can think of so there the kids who just recently graduated. I can think of like four or five different examples in that class. And you have to keep in mind that like last year's seniors who are off in college and everything like right now, I had them, some of them I had freshman year in Honors English 1. Then I had some of them sophomore year in like uh, a class that I was teaching. And then I had them again junior year. Some of them I had senior year. So like some of those kids I had for like three or four years in a row. So I got to know them really well. But it wasn't until they were like juniors and they were applying for college that I got to hear really what was going on in their family lives. And so I had um, one girl who was homeless for most of the year, her junior year, um, who was, you would never, like she was so well adjusted in class, she always got her homework done, she was just like, you would never guess that there were any yeah. problems that she was having. Um, and then I had another student who had a very similar, like poverty stricken, I guess, life and a broken family and everything like that. And again, he was so strong and I look at these kids and I think sometimes like, what is it, what is it inside of them that keeps them going when they have all of this stuff crumbling down around them? And I think for some students, I think school becomes their, their pillar. I guess yeah. you know like it this is the thing that I can do and this is the thing that I can control I can't control all this other stuff so the one boy is at Northwestern on a full ride scholarship the other girl is at Amherst College who and she's like succeeding beyond all expectations which by the way is the number one liberal arts college in the country it's going. we focus our analysis of the MCHS East Campus on juniors and seniors who have experienced three or more years of high school the results show that though 32 of the 54 students who were surveyed have trouble completing their schoolwork at home due to negative situations, 46.3% of those students were still able to achieve GPAs of 4.1 or higher. How much do you see the home life of your students affecting their grades? Affecting their grades? I, it definitely plays a factor because, I mean, as teachers we give homework, and so the whole premise of that is that that is practice that they're doing at home, and if home life uh, home life can definitely affect how much progress and how much success they do and so that they're prepared for in class and stuff. So what were some of your motivations for working with students? Uh, I got into working with students, especially high school students, just because of um, where they are at in their lives. There's a lot that they've gone through. They've already gone through elementary and middle school, but high school is really important because that's where they, most of them figure out what they want to do for the rest of their lives and they get a little bit more rigorous with the content. And so definitely helping them not only with math, because I love math, but also helping them through all the personal stuff that they're going on and being that role model and that inspirational adult to them, uh, especially if they don't see that outside of school with home life being such a factor, at least giving them some type of positive role model is, uh, is why I got into what I do. So life is full of many problems, but you shouldn't let it get you down because there's always a way to persevere through your problems. I've been homeless for months on end. I've lived in houses without power for weeks on end. And today I'm excelling in school. I have a large social group and I'm making the best of my life. Our message to everyone watching our documentary is you have a chance to make what you want of your own life. You don't have to worry about anyone else's problems but your own. And you need to focus on bettering yourself and not letting anything get in your way.